you know, I just want to thank our lovely praise team. Did they do a good job? Give them a, give, give, give it up for them. Thank you guys. I was, I was blessed. They, they lifted my heart in singing. And I praise God for that. Sometimes, saints, all we need is a little encouragement. You know, and, 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 and uh, something to also lead the way to, to, to bring us to a point of opening up our hearts to worship God. And so I want to thank our praise team for that. This week, as, as uh, Natalie mentioned, some of us have had trying weeks, uh, trials. Some of us have had some ups, some downs, um, some hard times. Uh, I was beat. I mean, I worked hard this week. When I, when I, when I came home each evening, you know, my mom is here. Uh, all I can do sometimes is to eat something and just sleep because, you know, the week has been trying, but I'm here today, and I just want to praise God for the fact that he has kept me. The word that he had laid on my heart this morning for me to share with you guys is going to come from the book, The Gospel According to John. I, I invite you to turn your Bibles with me as we will read together. John chapter 1, and we will read verse says 38 and 39. John chapter 1, verses 38 and 39. It reads, He said to them, verse 30, 38, And Jesus turned and saw them following him. Are you there? John chapter 1, verse 38. And Jesus turned and saw them following him and said to them, What do you seek? They said to him, Rabbi, which translate, Teacher, where are you staying? He said in verse 39, He said, Come and you will see. So they came and saw where he was staying and they stayed with him that day. Let us pray. Father, speak to me and speak to your people. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, I, I personally believe that we all should have goals, vision, something to see down the future. All of us should see ourselves somewhere, someplace, at some appointed time, other than now. There is a statement I came across. I, I find it to be very profound. It, it's, it reads, if you don't make up your mind, your unmade mind will unmake you. Now, now, the question I will ask you guys is, do you all have a plan for the future? Do you all see yourself somewhere in, 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 in two, three, four, five years' time. A few years ago, I was sitting in a group, and the question was asked to me, where do you see yourself in the next five years? And um, I can recall, as others were thinking, I never thought to myself, really, where do I see myself in the next five years? But that question challenged me to think of what do I really want for myself within the next five years, or a few years' time. And so, the title for this message is, Know What You Want. What did I say? Know what you want. So, when the question was asked, where do you see yourself? I had to ask myself, what do I want for myself? Where would I put my family and friends in the picture in the next few years' time, most importantly, where would I place Jesus in all of this? Saints, the Bible tells us that two men were following after Jesus. Now, these men were firstly disciples of John. Okay? They started walking after Jesus a day before they saw Jesus for the very first time. But when they saw Jesus, a declaration was made 
for John their first teacher, who they have been following as John's disciples made a declaration. He said, Behold, when they saw Jesus speaking to them on the crowd as he was performing baptism in the river Jordan, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes it away the sins of the world. Saints, the disciples, when they found out that this Jesus was the man that they all have been waiting for, longing for, the Bible tells us that they started following after Jesus. Therefore, they started following him. They might have had an intention. Why would they start following Jesus? In the Bible, as we read in the Gospels, the lives, the stories of Christ, people follow Jesus for various reasons. Now, we all are here today. So I will ask you the question, why are you seated here today? Why aren't you somewhere else? Why aren't you at the park? Why aren't you having fun? It's hot outside. Some people have passed this morning. They are, they, are, they are having fun in the pools. Somewhere else. Why aren't you somewhere else? Why are you here today? What is your reason for being here to hearing something from God? What is your purpose of following Jesus? Saints, you must have a definitive response and answer to that question. And may I suggest that there is some fundamental thing that you must consider. And may I suggest some question to think about as essential. Some question you must think about as literal. And some question you must consider to be fundamental in your faith. Why am I, he why am I here? When I leave here, what is it that I intend to gain or to take with me? And also, is my time here worth spending here? It is eternal. It is elemental for you to know what you want in following Christ. In no way should we ever live a mediocrity life in following Jesus. What am I saying, saints? As the gospel story have displayed, people have followed Jesus for various reasons. Commonly, however, is that they heard he is an agent of change. Now, I know that's practical for my personal experience. Many people come to Jesus for various reasons. I know when I was introduced to the concept of being saved, I learned before I made a response that I was born as a sinner. Shaping in iniquity, condemned to die eternally. Thus, I had to ask myself the question, what do I want for my future as a sinner? Do I want to continue in sin? Or would I like to have a change of heart, a change of life, a change of direction? Now, when the offer was made to me, I accepted it. I had a friend, and I had friends who also accepted the call. But what was their reason? Intently, I remembered one of them came to me and said, you know, you're going to get baptized? I'm going to get baptized. And so we both got baptized. Now, just for story's sake, in two weeks' time, he stopped going to church. I've never seen him back since. But you must have your personal reason. Why are you following Jesus? Saints, these two men who started following Jesus, when he asked them, what are you seeking? In other words, what is it that you want of me? What do you really want from Jesus? Their response suggests that they might have only wanted information. But, you know, there's something unique or beyond unique about the man called Jesus. Because with Jesus, you always get more than you contemplate. With Jesus, my friends, you always get more than you anticipate. With Jesus, my friends, you always get more than you can calculate. He is never the typical. He is certainly above the supernatural, 
and over the top is very non-traditional. Jesus came into the lives of people and turned their world upside down. Some couldn't understand him. They baffled before him as they tried to figure him out and question him. But that's Jesus, my friends. So when we come with our little plans and ideas that I'm going to gain this from Jesus, you know, saints, just be prepared to have your mind blown because he has something up his sleeves for you. Now, as I read the story, some things came to me. The response of Jesus when he said to them, come and see. I believe that in that response, he offered experience of his presence. What am I talking about, saints? When Christ said, come and see, this is, and this was, and still is, an invitation to learn of him. When Jesus says, come and see, he's offering you something beyond your own imagination. It is not just where I am staying, Christ was saying. He's also saying, come and see where I'm going. It's not also where I'm going, Christ was saying, but he's also saying where I want to take you. Saints of God, I believe that Jesus wants to take us to an higher experience. Saints, I believe that where we are today, where we are today, this is not the place that Christ really wants us to be in our walk with him. I believe that Christ wants to enrich your life. I believe that Christ wants you to have a personal experience for you to be able to stand and to tell and to speak and to shout aloud, you have met the man. Saints, in my experience of walking with Christ, I have come to understand that God desires to make us or to take us to an higher experience with him. And with that, he also wants us. And I have to admit, he has an inheritance for us. Saints, listen to me now. We might not, we may not be rich. We may not have much. But with Jesus, we have enough. You know, friends, where I'm coming from, I wish you all could see. But as you look at me today, I'm just a living testimony. You see, my friends, Christ found me someplace. But where he found me, I'm happy that he had taken me to another level. When I look back at my life and I ask myself the question, about 15 years ago, for this year makes 15 years since I've met Jesus. But when I look back and consider 15 years ago, the plans I had for my life, oh my God, I can only praise God that Jesus came my way. My mom is here. I can only praise God that Jesus had made it possible for me to stand and to tell and to show that he is real. I had some messed up plans for my life. Just the other day, I was recalling, telling somebody that while I was just 14 years of age, bear with me now, bear with the preacher. While I was just 14 years of age, I had a plan to get a female as young as I was. 15, my plan was to get a child by the age of 15. Now, a 15-year-old is in high school, am I right? A 15-year-old doesn't have a job to take care of him or herself much less to take care of a child or a spouse or a partner. Do you see how the enemy has us trapped? Do you see how the enemy has even our young people minds skewed up, messed up, tangled up, wrapped up, and tied up in sin? If it had not been for Jesus Christ and his saving grace, if it had not been for Christ who sent somebody my way like these two men, they heard of him and they wanted to know more of him. And while I was 15, he sent someone my way and said, would you like to know Jesus for yourself? So, so, so this is it now. While these two disciples were disciples of, of John, and, 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 and Jesus himself said, there is no greater prophet than John the Baptist. Okay? So John was a great prophet at the time. Am I talking to somebody? John was a great prophet. 
and they were following John. And certainly, we can, we, we, we can use our imagination and think that John must have taught them about the Messiah to come, who's to come. But one thing came to me as I read this passage, saints, is that even though we might find ourselves somewhere great, when Jesus comes by, he intends to take us somewhere greater. And even though they were following after a great prophet, Jesus is ten times greater than John. So what they saw passing by, they became curious. I'm great with someone great already, but this is somebody who I would love to be or to see or to experience something greater. And saints, when Jesus said, come and see, Jesus saints, he wants us to not to just see, but to taste, to feel, to grow, and to live, to abide, to experience him. This is the pattern of God. For when God called the disciple, when Jesus called the disciple, what he did, he taught them. They experienced him. They learned of him. And they became, what, familiar and knowing for themselves. And what they did. Then he sent them out to go and to tell and to show others of what they have experienced. Now, the normalcy of teacher in Jesus' time is to train their disciples uh, who, when, when they have been trained, they would be sent out. So then, really, would one teacher make a recommendation to go and follow another in the time of Jesus? Think of it now. Why would one teacher would send his disciples to go and follow another? What the word is telling us, my friend, this exactly is what John did. And in doing so, he displayed humility. Not only that, but he displayed confidence in Jesus. But what John was, 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 was simply doing was pointing to Jesus, telling the disciples, listen, you have been with me for a while, but now is the time to go and follow Christ. You saints, me, all of us, we have been someplace in our experience. But today, Jesus is saying, it's time to go and take your life to a higher level. What Jesus is saying, complacency cannot be enough for you. You might be achieving, yes. You might be in, in, your, in your mode of success, yes. But, but ask yourself the question, is there room for improvement? Is there room for growth? Is there room for a new experience? Saints, it is beyond the information and the theory of following Jesus. It is beyond coming to church Sabbath after Sabbath. It is beyond hearing sermons after sermon. It is beyond just having a membership or to be called a Seventh-day Adventist or to say I'm a part of the Grace Place Church experience. Saints of God, following Jesus is more than beyond all these things. It, it, it entails a plan for your future. Now, what it is that I want, where do I want to see myself in the next five years' time from now? When Jesus said to the disciples, as he's saying to us, come and see, is not just to see, but is also to receive the offer that I have. An offer to discipleship, an offer to commitment, and an offer to selfless service and sacrifice. What do I mean? In no way, when you and I decide to commit ourselves to Jesus, then we can remain the same. No way. It's impossible. I had to make some radical decision in my life and my experience when it comes on to following Christ. As a young man in my teenage years, when I decided to live the Christian life, I had to make some radical changes, made some changes of some friends I used to keep I had to leave behind. 
Places I used to go, I had to stop going there. Words I used to speak, I had to stop speaking them. Things I used to put in my body, I had to stop intaking them. Saints, what I'm saying to us is we have to make some radical and practical decision in order to experience Christ on a higher level. Now, another thing that Christ wants us to experience when he says, come and see, saints, is also to experience his presence. His presence. Now, Jesus' invitation to come and see is also an invite to, to, to learn of him on, on what? On an intimate level. Intimacy. What is intimacy for some of us? Sadly, intimacy, we often mix intimacy with, 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 with favorable relationships. You know, growing up saints, uh, some cultures, I don't know about many of you, but, you know, my immediate cultural background where, where, where I'm coming from, uh, uh, um, uh, men were, were taught that, that intimacy was sexual relations with women. But when Christ invites us saints to come and know him on an intimate level, it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's an offer for us to find ourselves at a place where it's sometimes going to be very uncomfortable. Because what Christ does to us, he challenges us to live life at a state where we are uncomfortable, not doing things that we enjoy sometimes, not going places that we find comfort in. But what he is asking of us is to do the things that we consider to be very, very uncomfortable. Intimacy. What that means, my friend, is for us to be vulnerable. And when you are vulnerable with God, you begin to know him. It's not just to hear of him, but you begin to experience him. What that means is that when you leave this place, you will be able to tell somebody about Jesus on a personal level. You see, saints, in my experience, it was not enough for me to go and tell others what the elder or the pastor says. Because they would ask the question, what about you? What have you experienced with Jesus? What has he done for you? What can you say about him? Who is him to you? Do you know him? Or do you just know of him? And knowing Jesus, saints, I guarantee you that when you look at your life in the, in the, in the retrospect, a couple years behind and, and make that analysis, you should never be the same place that you were yesterday a week, a month, a year ago. What that simply would mean is that you don't have an intimate relationship with Christ. Or you're not growing spiritually. You might be a spiritual dwarf. But that's not what Christ is saying when he said, come and see saints. He's offering intimacy. And when you find intimacy with Christ, it won't be that hard either for you to relate to others. In your relationships. You know, saints, in the Middle Ages, it produces, as I, was, as I was doing my research, it produced, I came across that the Middle Ages produces a set of women called the Beguinians. A set of lay women who form Christian communities to pursue Jesus Christ. Here, they could hear scriptures daily. The, they, they would find fellowship with like-minded believers. What, I, what, I, what I'm saying is that with what like-minded believers. And, and with that, they would cultivate their personal relationship with the Lord. So, so, so I want us to also understand something. Community is of importance. I'm not saying 
you don't need time for yourself, but it's very important for you to, to be a part of a community that is like-mindedness, that has the same vision and has the same uh, 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 futuristic plans. Speaking to somebody about the Seventh-day Adventist message, one time we would hear often, Jesus is coming back, Jesus is coming back, Jesus is coming back. Now, Often we don't hear that same message. Nevertheless, we still believe he's coming back. But with the Seventh-day Adventist community, we have things in common. We believe in the judgment. We believe in the sanctuary message. We believe God gave us a special message to tell to the world. And so we form a bond and a community. We also believe in the seven-day Sabbath. That's why we are all here today. It's important to be a part of that community because sometimes, saints, listen now, sometimes you find yourself a little bit down, outcast, trodden, beaten, battered, and bruised. And so by yourself, it's hard to get up and shake off and go forth. But when you have friends, genuine friends with intimate relationship, it's easier for you to take up your phone or to send a text message or something and to call somebody or to ask them, listen, I'm down. I'm tired. Just pray for me. Community, intimacy, that's what Jesus offers. And saints, with these women, as they form their community, they, they build bond and relationship that help them to propel a closer walk with Jesus. And in their writing, they often describe their intimate relationship with God as nothing but pure sweetness. There's a song say, it's sweeter with Jesus as the days goes by. Their level of intimacy when experienced by one of the two men, Andrew here in the Bible, the Bible says he first went and got his brother. So that's a response of walking and coming to know Jesus. Saints, I can imagine it must have been a rich experience. Because I remember when I got saved, that fire built up in me. What I used to do when I was back home in Jamaica, I used to walk and tell people in my community of Jesus. When I was in school, I used to tell my friends of Jesus. And as I grow, it became more exciting, more exciting, and more exciting. And as I continue to see results, that passion built up in me. And that's the reason why I'm able to stand here and tell you about Jesus and his offer. Because he has taken me to an higher experience. And one more thing. That Jesus offer when he says, come and see, saints. He's also offering us an experience of change. The experience with Christ, he offers change. What does that look like? Finding Christ is being found by Christ. You know, often it's not we who go and seek after him. But often it's he who comes and sought us out. And when he sought after us, he finds us. And when we are found, we, the discovered, become actual discoverers. Because we, in turn, takes up the commission to go and to tell others of Jesus. Now, where I'm from is in an, it, in, in, it's an inner city community in Kingston, where, where we'll call the projects. Okay. And, and, and I can recall lots of people never met Jesus in their life, never gone, never set foot into a church. I recall saints of God, people who live in continuous fear for their lives. They would never leave their immediate community or neighborhood to venture across another. And when I go into those places... And I speak to those people, my heart turns inside because what? I see how the devil can have people living in bondage. 
And when I'm talking about bondage, I'm not just talking about spiritual bondage, but I'm talking about some, some, some captivating chains that makes people afraid to even live. Can you be afraid to live, to wake up? I don't mean you're, you're ill, you're sick. No, or mentally ill, no. I'm saying people are afraid to just live. That's what the enemy has the world in today. But thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus, there's hope. Because when Jesus came in my life, and I was able to go to those people in those communities. I've lived to see many of them follow Jesus and took that offer. Come and see saints of God. The point is not really what you want often for your life. But it's what Christ wants for you. Am I talking to somebody? So even though we might have plans for our life. Do we make room for the plan that Christ has our lives. What is exemplified throughout scripture is immediate change when you accept Christ. It can start from small. It doesn't have to be extravagant. It can start from you just changing your, 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 your appearance. Cert, certain, certain way you used to dress before, you don't dress them like that anymore. Cert, certain, certain way you used to communicate, you don't communicate like that anymore. Small changes and after time, they will certainly grow. Saints of God, as I come down to a close, what Christ wants for us is to accept his offer. He wants for us to accept his presence. He wants for us to accept his gift of eternal life. And when we do that, like these two disciples, like these two disciples, Jesus, my friends, is saying, it is not necessarily about what you want, but it is what you are about to bargain for. It is what God has in store for you. So, the question I will ask you, where do you see yourself in the next week? Where do you see yourself in the next month? Or where do you see yourself in the next year or five years' time? These men knew what they wanted. Even though they already had a great prophet, a great teacher. But when they saw greater came their way, they took that opportunity. Now are you willing to take the opportunity and allow God to take your life to an higher level? Are you saying to yourself, I'm complacent and I'm okay where I am in my experience? Or are you saying to God, today, Jesus, I hear you. I feel you. I know that you want to take me to another level. That's what Christ is saying. And the Bible says, saints, the Bible says, when these two men saw Jesus, they followed after him. And the Bible says in, in verse 39, when he said, come and you will see. Uh, they went, they saw, and they stayed. What that tells me, saints, is that their personal experience with Jesus gave them something that was enriched. It gave them something that was beyond the natural. It gave them something that was beyond their expectation. That, my friends, tells me that today Jesus is saying, come and see. You believe you have experienced Jesus? Think again. You believe you have made it? Think again. You believe you have arrived? Think again. Jesus is saying to somebody here, come and and see, don't allow yourself to remain at the same place no longer. What Jesus is saying to somebody today, my friends, is saying, come and experience the supernatural. Come and experience change and joy. Come and experience the intimacy that I have to offer.
You know, saints, there's a song that says, more about Jesus, I would know. More of his grace to others show. More of his saving fullness see. More of his love who died for me. Are we really seeking anything today? Or are we just living in the religious aspect of life? Getting up each day, going to work each day, going to school each day, living the formalities? Or are we seeking after something? Really? Are we just being religious each weekend? Getting up each Saturday morning, getting ready, put on our clothes, come to church, have worship, go back home. Or are we really seeking after something? Do I really want to experience a newness in my life? Do I really want to say more about Jesus? I would know more of his love to others. I will show more of his saving fullness, see, more of his love who died for me. You know, saints, as I close, I will challenge somebody today. As I've taken up that challenge, and I've been going through a period, a season in my life, where the enemy would seek to keep me at a certain place. But I was reminded that Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Saints, I was reminded that Jesus said, I've gone to prepare a place for you. And if I've gone and he has gone, he said, I will come back and take you unto myself. That where I am, you, Fabian, will be too. Saints, I was reminded of the promises that Jesus made. When he says, all things are possible through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. It doesn't matter where you are in your experience. It doesn't matter what the enemy might be whispering in your ears. It doesn't matter the lies, your spouses, your boyfriends, your girlfriends, your teachers, your boss is telling you what Jesus is saying to somebody today. Come and see the newness that I have for you. Allow me to take you to a higher level. What is it that you want? So if you truly want, my friends, to experience Jesus at a higher level, I invite you to stand with me as we pray together. And as we pray, saints, this is not just a religious practice. I'm inviting you to speak to God in your heart. To say to him, Lord, you see me open. I want intimacy with you. You see me where I am. You know where I am. You know what I'm going through. You see me today in my struggles, in my needs and my wants. But no longer will I remain the same after today. Take me to a higher level. That's what I want. Let's pray. Father, we, we just want to praise your name today. For we have been blessed. We just want to thank you for your offer. That though we were, we were born in sin. Though we were shaped in iniquity. You came, you came and gave us grace. And so Jesus, as you offered your offer to the disciples, you are making that same appeal to us today. Come and see. You are saying to us, it's not what you really want for your life because your plans are messed up. But what you are saying to us is, take my hand. And my offer is what I have in store for you. And so God, as we stand to our feet, 
we just want to thank you for saving us. We want to thank you for the written word, the spoken word. And we want to thank you, God, that though I might not be at the place that you want me to be, you are still working on me and with me. And so, Jesus, we thank you for all that you have done and all that you will do today and henceforth in Jesus' name. Amen.